The first January 6th case to go to trial began today in Washington, D.C., with jury selection and opening statements expected tomorrow. DOJ prosecutors have charged Guy Wesley Reffitt, an anti-government militia member with five felony counts, including obstruction and entering the Capitol with a pistol attached to his hip. His trial will be closely watched and perhaps even set a benchmark for how the hundreds of other prosecutions might proceed. Let's bring in former U.S. Attorney and former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Harry Littman and NBC News Justice reporter Ryan Riley, who is watching today's proceedings for us. Ryan, fill us in. Yeah, it was such a really interesting look at the cross-section that is D.C. Because you had everyone who was going through this jury selection process from, you know, a Costco employee to um, a Walgreens associate to a D.C. Uh, public schools janitor, all the way up to the stepson of someone uh, who actually served as former President Trump's ambassador to Canada and the United Nations. So you oh, really wow. got this huge scope of D.C. Uh, that you were really just getting this picture of. What was really interesting, too, is you had people who paid very close attention to these January 6 cases. Some of people were following it pretty religiously, even seeking out that information. You had a bunch of people sort of in the middle who, you know, casually viewed this in their normal news consumption and were, out, were outraged by what happened. And then you got a few people who just really didn't know much about January 6 at all, other than it happened, and that's about it. They, they didn't know what happened to the cases afterwards. They, you know, just watched, obviously, on the news the Capitol attack unfold. But it really was this really diverse view uh, from these, you know, this huge cross-section of D.C. today. Harry Littman, what are you watching for as this first case gets ready to be presented to whomever is, is selected on this jury? The stakes are high. Look, this guy's a 49-year-old uh, man from Texas, comes with a rifle and shotgun, goes to the uh, riot, is stopped at with rubber bullets at the West Terrace, doesn't get in. That's the narrow slice. But prosecutors are entitled to show, and they are going to show, the whole panoramic view and story of what happened here. It's going to be the first time, just as, say, the January 6th committee is trying to construct a broad panoramic narrative. That's what DOJ is going to do. They're going to use the charges, permit them to say, here's everything that happened, where they're going to be video of Mike Pence. There's going to be all the uh, sort of panorama of different surveillance videos to tell the whole story. That matters at a minimum for the 375 other defendants in the wings if they tell it crisply, compellingly, well, legally, adequately then those 375 are not going to want to fight. If, on the other hand, the defense version, and they'll present something like this is really mainly political speech, and if it is a sort of muddled uh, presentation by DOJ, that will change things, not just for the 375, but the, there's really an ultimate audience here of the American people. It's the first chance to see the whole thing set out as a story, as a narrative, as a historical account that will hopefully, for the, the department hopes, get purchased and really be the narrative that history begins to provide. And Ryan, do we know at all how long these trials are, are expected to take? Yeah, I think we're expected to probably take the presentation of the evidence to take roughly a week before it goes to the jury. But before then, in this next week, I think we're going to see a lot of family drama, for, for, uh, frankly, because this is a situation where this uh, guy, Reffitt's own son, actually turned him into the FBI before the January 6th attack and then subsequently provided more information um, and alleged that his father threatened him about talking to the FBI. So this is really going to be a pretty dramatic case, including testimony uh, from the FBI uh, agents in terms of the gun that he allegedly carried, uh, as well as testimony from Capitol Police officers who protected the Capitol that day and who specifically squared off with Guy Reffitt. Um, ultimately, I think that the, the defense attorneys are going to have to focus, one of their arguments is going to have to focus on whether or not he was actually carrying the gun, because there are photos of him that are what appears to be his belt. So they have to basically look at whether or not he was actually carrying a gun that day, which is a critical part of this charge. With your help, we'll all be watching. Harry Littman, Ryan Riley, thank you so much for joining us today.